some of you back. Well, I'll be back, really. A uh, couple of announcements as we begin. Uh, you've got so many things that are picking up some momentum and getting ready to uh, get going here. That Valentine Sweetheart Dance is coming up. Uh, we have Upward Sports. Their first weekend is this coming weekend on the 27th. That's happening. Uh, and, and so much more. I just handed out, and if I missed you, there's some in the back there. It's actually a trifold of the story that's going to be beginning, and you can see that on the 11th with an orientation or the first kind of introduction on the 4th of February. And uh, this is just a, a stupendous, wonderful thing that we can do. Uh, you'll, see a, you'll see a video commercial next week, but this week you have to just deal with me. Uh, and what it is, it's 31 weeks of going through the Bible. I think it is uh, in a lot of people's lists. I've heard more than once, man, I want to read through the Bible, can't find the time. You know, or the Bible's confusing as I'm trying to get through it. I read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus. Wow, right? And they kind of stop. Um, but uh, we're going to go on an adventure as a church going through the Bible. And my encouragement to you, strongly encourage you, is to do more than just Sunday morning worship. Uh, there's going to be, and, the, and as you can see, there's some quick, frequently asked questions on there that you might be already thinking. What if I don't have time? What if I miss some Sundays? What about Sunday morning, Sunday school? What about other things like small groups? And so we're really wanting to encourage you to be involved with a small group that meets on a convenient night or day that you can meet. And that's pretty much the key. Uh, we've got both Pam Nelson and Deb Shadle have already stepped up to kind of leadership positions in this to help coordinate, because I cannot do this by myself. We have another person that's gonna be impacting the audio visual, another one with the worship as far as putting things together and so on. As far as education, we have another person that's gonna be stepping up to do something like that. So there's a lot to do, a lot to happen with this. And uh, by the end of the, the, the 31 weeks, you'll be able to say, hey, I, I know much more about how the Bible flows. I know my part in the Bible. Um, and uh, th that's what my encouragement to you is. So it's small group is different than Sunday morning. Sunday morning Bible class is different than Sunday morning worship. Uh, they're all, all kind of revolving around the same topic or chapter. But uh, there's a lot of questions you may have, and you can contact myself, contact Pam Nelson as well, uh, as far as what's going on there. This is the first draft, and um, I saw it, and I said, let's, let's get this into their hands so they can see it right away. The only thing I would like to pay, you know, as far as scheduling, two more things. Uh, we are not doing Sunday morning worship and or maybe a break in small group, depending on your small group, for Palm Sunday and Easter. So those two days, because we want to keep the continuity of the story going, and we're not going to fast forward to an Easter chapter and then skip it when we get there. That, that just gets too confusing. So I wanted to encourage you on that one to see that. And also, some people say, well, if I can't make them all, I don't even know why I should bother. Well, this is not a one thing is contingent on the last thing to do. So if you skip a Sunday and you come next Sunday, you'll miss a Bible study, you'll miss a, a, a sermon, you'll miss a, a, a chapter or perhaps a book of the Bible. Uh, but the next one is not, like I said, contingent on the last, with a few exceptions about chronologically. The same thing happens with small groups. Uh, one time... Uh, would happen a small group, let's say they meet on Sunday afternoon. And that's your your time that you meet on Sunday afternoon. And it's, you know, you're you're in the Moses story, you got the Exodus happening, you got the Red Sea happening, but you can't make that Sunday morning. The neat part about this, as long as the small groups we can make this work, is that the Tuesday that you can make, that's not your small group, but it, you want to not miss, you say, hey, Bonnie, I hear you're hosting one in your house, and, and you've got uh, John leading it. That's great. Can I come to yours because I missed my Sundays? Because I want to catch the Exodus story. I don't want to miss. And Bonnie says, sure, come on. 
Come on over. Yeah, we meet at 7 o'clock. Make sure you bring a dessert. We're good to go. You know, something like that. So uh, I'm sure you, now that I've rambled for a little bit, you might have a dozen more questions. But if you get a chance, go ahead and look through this and, and read through this. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll have more information and, and understanding. Really want to get huge involvement. Final announcement. Next week, 10 o'clock service and free lunch. Cater. <laughs> We're going all out for you guys. We want everyone to come to Sunday morning service and to stay for the Ministry Clarity Creative Event. I've been advertising it. It's been in the newsletter. It's been on the website. It's been in the new, in the uh, SPL News. It's It's been out there. But now you've got a verbal, please, please come. We're going to be taking those pillars, engage, equip, empower, and shine. We're going to be breaking up, and we're going to now put some meat on the bones as far as how can we do this, what aren't we doing right, what do we want to do right, and you'll have a voice. And you get to choose one of those four areas and what you want to do. So, again, next week, really, I'm hoping to, we had 90 the first time we did this. All right? I hope my expectations aren't selling you all short. I'm hoping for seven. But uh, let's see if we can get that 90 again. John's got it going on. Like I said, it's going to be catered. It's going to be wonderful. So uh, we want to get that happening. 10 o'clock next week. It'll be a blended service, so it won't be super traditional. It won't be super contemporary. Last, my last thing, I thought it was last last time, right? We have helping hands, the baskets in the back, and I have someone waving their hand. Yes? Is there a sign-up sheet for help for uh, upper sports? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sign up sheets for that. Does, that. does anybody here have any announcements? We might get to that. <laughs> All right. Well, God's blessings on your worship today. Uh, today we are celebrating Life Sunday, the preciousness of your life and mine and all life. Uh, there's a handout and those little cute little feet that you can put as, on your clothes as you leave as well today. And we're also collecting pennies for life. Uh, in a bucket back there. And as uh, Pam Bennett says, it could be dollars too. <laughs> so I uh, just want to encourage you. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I'm not even going to say the last time, last thing. I got one more thing. When my father in law was in the hospital, my small group, this is years ago, came to our house and prayed with us. My father of law was in the hospital. Someone from another small group came and said, you need to leave and go there and be with him. I even wrote a letter saying, handprints on my back. They bought a plane ticket for me to go because it was Easter, it was Holy Week. And I said, I can't miss Holy Week. And they said, Pastor, you need to go. Small groups are incredible. They create an intimacy. Some of you function, in a sense, with relationships in this church that are so near and dear to your heart. You never want to see those goes away. In fact, that's one of the reasons you come to church. Not just because you have fantastic preaching and awesome music, no, you come because there are people here that you love. A small groups does that. They meet together, they create that wonderful relationship, and it makes a difference when they're going through difficult times and tough times. I mean, thank you for praying for Cora, some of you. My small group were the first in line to receive the news about prayer. So if you're thinking about this small group, if it's slowly starting to get into your mind, like maybe that's something we want to do, please keep your eyes open. Because what we're hoping is the leaders of these small groups are choosing a day that they can facilitate. And if you don't want to lead, but you have a house that can handle eight to 10 people, and you want someone else to lead, and you pick the night. Because then we will say, I want Tuesdays, I want Thursdays, I want Sunday afternoon. And so that's that's some of that. How did I do, Debbie? Did I do okay there? <laughs> She's my small group champion today. All right. I'm done now. I'm walking back there, and we're going to begin with our entrance hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs> Yeah. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes. To seal the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of heavens, and uh, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, on the majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated for our song of praise.
Many of us know the story of Noah. We also know, perhaps a little less, but still, what preceded the story of Noah. It was God who looked down and used the plural, in a sense saying, what in the world do we have here? A people who have drifted so far away, who have diverged from following me as we should. I'm regretting making the human race. Can you imagine God regretting making us today? It's, I, I can't, I can't. I only know it's true. And so he, he thought he'd just do a do-over and start over. But then something happened. He, he looked down, he, he saw Noah. And he saw someone who had faith Faith in the promise of God, faith in the promise that God would send a Messiah, a Savior, someday, a faith probably similar to Abraham's, who we know was reckoned to him righteousness. All righteous. And so he said to Noah, build an ark and to take within him his household. The story goes about the 40 days and 40 nights that flooded the land. As he built the Arky Arky, not a hickory barky barky, right? <laughs> but today's message comes from Genesis 5, or 9, 1 to 15, and it's what happens after. And God said, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. And for your lifeblood, I will require a reckoning. From every beast, I will require it, and from man. From his fellow man, I will require a reckoning for the life of man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. And you, 
be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. The God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul, his speaking to the People of Ephesus reminded them that they were a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, and we are destined for what he has inspired us to be and to do. This passage from Ephesians will also serve as today's uh, text for our message from Ephesians chapter 2. You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, we might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can you please stand, honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> truly, truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will also live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Children, if there are, would like to come up for children's message. That would be super. <sighs> 
Hey there, good morning. Hey, I need you to help me, okay? I need to open this, okay? You know what this is? You do. She knows it's a map. Hey, it's not a Google map. It's not a phone map. It's a map map, right? So let's, have you used these at all? No. Help me, help me out there. There we go. Right. This is actually a map. Can you tell what it is here? Right there, it looks like. You have any idea? Nope, that's okay. That's all right. Now, this is the bottom half of it. Okay, it's one of those two pages. No idea? All right. Well, this is the map of Illinois, the state. This is our state. And now, we are at East Peoria. Can you find East Peoria? You know what, if you look over here, find it easy. 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 right there. Yeah. Alright, you see it says J12. Alright, so on one side it says 12, and on the top it has letters. If you connect the two letters, the 12 and the J, you should come close. Can you do that? Let me hold it up for you. You can try that. So J, H on the page here. The 12. Okay, go across. You see it? Mm -hmm. Oh, let me hold it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We got the area. Okay, let's pull this over. This is always been the issue with math, isn't it? Especially if you're driving. All right. <laughs> there's Peoria. Oh, there's East Peoria. But you don't live in East Peoria. Where do you live? I see the fine work. Oh, I see it. You know you're close. So find East Peoria. And go south. Oh, you almost had it go south, which is down. Martin, that's your name. That's where you live. You know, we used to use these all the time growing up, and, and what would happen was we would say, you know, we're gonna start out, we're gonna start out where we are. We're gonna start out in Morton, we're gonna start out in East Peoria. We're all gonna be at the church, you know. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head towards all right, we're gonna head towards uh, uh, we're gonna head towards Mont Illinois Bloomington. And so we gotta take this road right here, right? This 74, it says here. We're gonna take that this way. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go north. We're gonna go north on 39. We're gonna go straight up all the way to Rockford. We're like, okay, that's Rockford. And what we would do is we would plot out what we're gonna do and where we're gonna go. You know, when you go on trips, isn't that kind of what your dad and your mom do? They are, we're gonna go on this trip, and we're gonna do this for one day. This the next day. Does that sound familiar, maybe? Okay, you plan out your life. Did you know that, even though this is a, a map of Illinois, that God has a map of your life? Yeah, he's a map of you. He knows, that. see, she was born this time, and then she was just a little baby, and then she went to the church, and she's going to be baptized at this time, and then she's going to go to this school, and she's going to play this sport, and she's going to have this mom and this dad and this sister, and she's going to be involved in this, and when she gets old enough to get to high school, she's going to... He has your whole life mapped out already. Now, why would God have your life, and mine too, already mapped out? He knows what tomorrow is, and I don't even know what tomorrow's going to happen. I know it's going to be Monday, but I don't know everything he does. And he does that because, believe it or not, you are extremely important to God. Some people think, well, I'm just a little girl. I'm just one man. How can I be important to God? But God doesn't look at it that way. God says, I love you so much. I want to be part of your life. Every part of it, I have it all planned out. Before you were in your mommy, he knew you. Now that's incredible. And so I would love it if from now on you'd think, boy, God has my whole life mapped out. You might tell that to someone someday. You know, someone in this, in this church that's listening that love children's messages so they get more out of it than sometimes the pastor talking, right? They may go, hey, that's really neat. I'm going to use that. I'm going to talk to someone today or tomorrow or next week. I don't know who it is. God knows because he has my life mapped out because I'm so special to him and I'm valuable to him. Today we're going to learn not only are we valuable, but we need to value our lives and everyone's lives. Okay? Well, thanks so much.
Now you know where to find yourself on, on the map here, and maybe you can show someone else what this map is all about. If you Google map, by the way, and you go way out, you'll see the state of Illinois, and you'll see where you live, okay? You go guys there. Thanks so much. A map. Oh, dating, dating. Our song, Just As I Am, 570 in the hymnal, of that will prepare us for today's message. They would hear and understand, grow in their walk, their appreciation of a God who loves us and has redeemed us. In Jesus' name, amen. Times that many of us will never, ever forget. <coughs> I will never forget when my first child was born. I will never forget the times in the delivery room, the time when I requested the same kind of relaxing medication that they gave my wife but they wouldn't give me. The times when I saw his fingers and toes and counted them and looked at them and saw how precious he was and is. Never forget it. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the time when he got older and a new addition was added. Another child, and you'd say, boy, I, I didn't know I could love someone and then love even more. I thought when I was married, that was it. But then you, you find this well bubbling over inside you, a love that continues to flow. You remember just how precious, precious they are to you. A gift from God. I never forget that. I never forget when I was confirmed in church and had to go up and talk in front of all those people about what it means for me to be a Christian. I never forget 
Christmas Eve candlelight services and be allowed to stay up till midnight. Precious. I'll never forget visiting my uncle. And only weeks later, he was in heaven. I'll never forget visiting people in the hospital, both young and old, who wondered why it was all happening to them. Some, that, towards what they thought was the end of their life, questioning, as some of us even do, no matter where we are in our walk of life, why am I here? What is my purpose? For what reason am I still around? And we question our value. Question a lot of value. In fact, we put that, that requirement on life, don't we? Young or old, healthy or unhealthy, strong or weak, sickly or unsickly, diseased or undiseased, having some sort of abnormality or not, we put requirements on the value of life. But God says, before you were knit in your mother's womb, I knew you. Which causes many of us to pause just a little bit when we're thinking about the value of life and, and realize that God must have a reason for creating us, creating us for a purpose. In fact, if you think about it, there's nothing that has been created that was or not given a purpose. Intentional designs for purpose. Oh, we might say that people have a, a design, and, and we might hear stories about certain things in nature that certainly have served purposes for uh, health, fruit, foods, even perhaps things like medicines that for some it's poison but for others it's something that would cure a disease if I were to have brought up a shovel you would know the purpose of a shovel a map you know the purpose of a map a pencil you know the purpose of a pencil digging writing <laughs> sometimes things that look pointless actually were designed with a purpose. For some of you, you're wondering, why in the world are there soda pop cans on the screen? <laughs> Who would have known that those holes were created so that you would twist them over the mouth of the hole so that you could put a straw in it and it would hold the straw? Fact, not fiction. Those things are made to turn around and hold a straw. Who would have guessed? I wouldn't have known it until I read it myself and tested it. We can create things with purpose. And that's discernment. It's a discernment. And it somehow wants to prove that it has a purpose. It's proof of purposeful lessness, if you will. If humanity possesses the ability to create a purpose, I think we can argue that it's not a stretch that we indeed were created for a purpose. In fact, the imply, implication, the idea that we have been created implies that you and I have a creator. Real simple logic, taking a baby steps before we just pass by that idea. Things have been created, which means that there's a creator, which means that we have to acknowledge that there's a creator. We live in a time and a place where when you mention a creator, that may be unpopular. Oh, there's intelligent design, and I believe things kind of fell into place, and it looks logical to me. But if you're looking at the beauty of creation, it's reasonable to ascertain that there was a creator. He existed. We're part of that creation. And so we have a creator. Now, Christians are convinced that the creator is none other than God himself. The God who reveals himself in the Bible. And he's fashioned men and women for his purpose. But many still doubt that uh, the assertion. I mean, look how 
things happen in this world and we question the purpose of them. We don't know the purpose. We don't understand why things are happening. I was watching a, a movie the other day about tragedies that were happening and the pastor was speaking to an individual of whom observed many of those tragedies and he was wondering at all why these things were happening. He was wondering what, in in disease, what could possibly be the design. And of course, he raised the question, why does God do these things? Interesting response the pastor had. He says, why are you blaming God? What about the devil? Oh, well, the man scoffed from the devil. He goes, wait a minute, stop. You know, if it's bad or something happens, we blame God. No, we don't give the devil any chance. The devil comes to seek and destroy and to tear down. What about that? But, he went on to say, I can promise you and I can tell you that God will work through this. He will not abandon you nor forsake you. He will be with you as you work through these tragedies, these difficulties of which we ponder, why is it happening? According to a study, some 45% of middle and high school students say that their life is not useful. That's tragic. That's a stark increase. Just 24 years ago, in the year 2000, it was only 25% that felt that way. Something's going on. Something's happening in our society that's infiltrating the very mind and the psyche of children and adults to the, where they question whether or not they have a purpose or not. God assures his readers. He assures each and every one of us that we indeed have a purpose. In the letter from St. Paul to the Ephesians, he says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. You've been created and designed for a purpose. Everyone has a purpose, whether they're at life's beginning or life's end. Why did they lose their child before the child was even born? Why did they take him? He was so young and vibrant. Why did they take him? He meant so much and we cherished his life so much. He was the greatest father and grandfather we ever seen before. And everyone would say that. Why? Why? To the other side of the coin, people are saying, why am I here? What purpose do I have to serve? I'm just, I'm only the devaluation of society is rampant. All of us can agree with that. In fact, it takes a preacher or a teacher extra measure of energy to try to convince his hearers that you are indeed loved by God, who is the Almighty God, and so much so he values you so highly, and then and, and stop. You're valued highly. And I have to beat that into my own head looking in the mirror and probably into your head and hearts too. To realize not just cognitively, but spiritually that I am so valued by God. That's truly a gift and it's amazing. He values me. He called each work of his hand good. And for God to call something good means good, good. <laughs> it doesn't just mean, hey, these cookies are all right. They could use a little more salt, a little more sugar. Hey, this cake is great, but I don't like the frosting. No, he called good, good. He declares to us something incredible. He, he declares to us that human beings created in his image, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, are his workmanship. Who, me? That's you. God who created all the world, 
All that exists by speaking it into existence is the same God who created us in Christ Jesus. Through his word, he calls us who were dead in our trespasses and sin to life through faith in Jesus Christ. In Genesis, God created the world. He called it good. Then when he created Adam, he called him very good. How valuable is life? You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You can rest in that certainty that you and all of life are not a mistake, not an accident, not a blob of cells or a bag of chemicals. No. You are so much more than this. So we value that. We lift that up. We encourage that. I think back to my son. I think back to my uncle. I think back to my father. I think back to so many that I've lost along the way, but that I, but so many more that are still living with me in this world. And I think we are valued. Valued. Another way of looking at it is to say, believers in Christ Jesus are the choice of carefully handcrafted treasure, an apple of God's eye, his creative masterpiece. Talk about a conversation starter. Sheila, can you imagine walking up to someone in Kroger and saying, you're a creative masterpiece. And so am I. Might start a conversation. They might think you have a big head, too. But how do you explain that? The guy of a God who doesn't make mistakes and he created me and all people. As the confirmation verse in the catechism said, he's given me my body, soul, eyes, ears, all my members, my reasons and all my senses, and he doesn't just leave them spin like a top of the world, he still takes care of them. He still preserves them. And it doesn't stop there. He continues to give and provide. You're a creative masterpiece, and we all have our various callings. Everyone has a calling. I've got some pictures on the slides here, just different people. I have moms and dads. I have neighbors and children. I have students and brothers and sisters. I have workers who work all kinds of different facets. All these positions, all these things, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We are built into a spiritual house. We celebrate that. And when I look at bricks like cinder blocks, wall to wall, I think we're all part of God's church. We're all knit together. We're all chosen. We're all loved. We're his chosen jewel of redemption. And he knew your calling. And he prepared you for it as he knitted you together in your mother's womb. No one knows exactly what they're going to be before they grow up. No one knows. They, they look at a child and, and they hope and they pray for that child and they, they, they just enjoy that and they nurture that child. But then God does what he does. And he sees a child begin to develop and, and to grow in such a way that that child now has a, a fascination with the stars or, or an affinity for numbers or affinity for numbers or you just see things happen with him or her. How delicate they are. And yet how tough they are. You realize God's planted in this little one something fabulous. And God's planted that in each and every person who's valued. You see... Here's something new to you and to me who think we make our choices and we decide. I think God, like that map, knew already 
where I would be. He knew I'd be in this place. He knew you'd be here this Sunday. Sometimes I think, this is my choice. I wanted to be a school teacher. I wanted to be a pastor. I was the guiding light, guiding my own path. But the fact of the matter is, the callings on your life and mine are not something that we choose. It's not something that we chose. It's something that God has already predestined us to do. I believe that. And as we walk in them, God blesses us. He continues to guide us and encourage us as we live, as he's called us to live. Sometimes I think when we work out and do those things, Christians especially might confuse these works as means by which we obtain favor with God. But our text tells us that we cannot obtain favor with God by what we do and what we say. No, God has already taken care of that. While we were yet dead in our trespasses, he sent his son. What a blessing that is. And so when I do things and when you do things, God blesses them. This is something that's not new for most of your ears, but it is a transformational type of teaching. It describes your purpose. It describes your vocation. It describes something that everybody has in their life. It's a calling. And so you live in that calling and you encourage others to do the same. It's probably more than holding a straw, but it might be holding someone else in your loving arms. Today we're acknowledging Life Sunday, Lutherans for Life. It wants us to value life at every area, in every calling, at every stage. And so we do. We don't question why. We just look to the one who's given us purpose. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do those things which God prepared beforehand. Our Messiah did the same thing. The work that was prepared for him, he fulfilled by following his father's prophecy and word and will. He took our sins to the cross so that now we are children of the one true king. Amen. May the good news keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, that you are valued, loved, and redeemed by Christ the crucified. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like the elder to come up prior to our time of presenting the Lord with our offerings, tithes, and gifts to speak to the congregation. Why give? If you've attended church here or elsewhere for any length of time, you know we'll receive an offering at some point during the service. Spoiler alert, that time's now. <laughs> However, have you ever stopped to consider why? Why should we give? After all, the money that's in your bank account is money you worked hard to earn, right? So why shouldn't you use all of it for your own benefit? Consider this, is that money really yours? Did you create the talents, knowledge, and skills needed to earn a paycheck? Did you make sure your heart was beating each day so you could go to work? Yeah, probably not. While you certainly have a big role to play in earning a living, God is the one who provides us with the ability to work. That's one reason to give. It's giving back to God something he provided for us in the first place. How about this? How do you know what someone values, what they spend their time and money on, right? If a total stranger or to see your schedule or bank statement, what would that person say you value most? Would it be your family, your vehicles, the latest tech gadget, or would they see that you prioritize your relationship with God? 
One way we put God first is by honoring him with our finances. Savior Jesus, 
to put away the desires and priorities of flesh, intervene and undertake on behalf of those beset by afflictions of our fallen race and the burdens of this broken world, be with them who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, who especially struggle against the, the tragedies, the temptations that would lead them astray. Drive the devil far away from everyone, considering to end human life in any way, shape, or form. May they, Lord, seek your face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from evil. Give answer to the ones who cry out, awaiting adoption, facing a surprise pregnancy, experiencing infertility, or during terminal diagnosis. Form in us a patient faith that leans upon your pressure, leans upon your presence and power in our holy time. With your Son and angels and all the saints, welcome us into the everlasting communion of your heavenly kingdom. For yours the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We pray. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we behold by faith the light of the world that enlightens all people to the gift of salvation revealed in his sacrifice for the life of the whole world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, Lord, God of Sabbath, of adore, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you have created, and sent your only begotten Son in our, into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his Old Testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you, O oh Father, be all glory and honor, worship and power with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As you have prepared your hearts and minds, welcome to the Lord's table. You may be seated.
except be for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take it here. The Lord Jesus Christ shall give you faith. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you when you start asking in true faith for the very last of our lives. Amen. Amen. the Lord's table.
Lord's table. sing our recessional hymn. Uh, there are, um, I don't know, five or six maybe poinsettias. They're small. They're in the galley. They are free for the taking. If you'd like to take those, this is they'll be finding a new home after, after today. So I want to give both services a chance for that. Um, there was something else, but it's gone now. So we'll continue then with our recessional hymn. I am Jesus